my personal uh, favorite thing if it comes to living is what we do here actually. You're in an apartment with 14 people. So if you live in bigger groups, it's way easier to reduce your field pins because then you can uh, organize yourself, you can organize your household, you can buy more uh, strategically food from sustainable sources, yeah. and it makes fun. Hey, hello, welcome, come in. It's great that you're visiting me. It's the first time that so many people are coming to my house. I would like you to show my neighborhood. I'm Matthias Stucki and I'm living here in a housing project, More Than Housing, which is quite innovative and I would like you to meet my neighborhood and my neighbors. So let's go on the balcony. So this is my neighborhood and you can see the lines with the flags that symbolizes the connections between the neighbors. And you can see over there my neighbor Matthias, he's sharing the same name as me, his old name is also Matthias and with his daughter Arlene. And now we're gonna visit him. I'm Matthias Probst, uh, I live here in the, the cooperative More Than Housing. I'm also in the board from the cooperative and do many things here on the area. We would like to talk about uh, energy and also other aspects regarding climate change and uh, system innovation that we are having here in this cooperative. Can you tell us more about uh, More Than Housing? What is this? It's a cooperative that was founded about 10 years ago as an anniversary project of all the cooperatives in the city of Zurich as an innovative platform, as a project to try out what the cooperatives learned themselves for the last 100 years. So what we see here yeah. at the end is 100 year experience yeah. of cooperative housing in the city of Zurich. Oh wow. And why have you decided to move in here? Well, I was bored about my normal apartment where I lived before, uh, close in the city center uh, with neighbors. I don't know. I was looking around for something more interesting. And uh, I found this nice project here and that was clear for me. I have to be part of this. Okay, great. And um, can you tell us, do you, where do you see potentials or how does this um, cooperative um, has a potential to reduce also uh, greenhouse gases and support uh, combat regarding climate change? Well, for a starter, we did our homework in the building sector. Uh, what you see here is uh, the top of the building innovation. So it's a really low energy, it's almost nothing that rests uh, for heating. It's a bit of warm water, but the warm water comes from a calculation center that stays right over there. And we use the waste heat from them. Uh, we did a lot of innovation on the technical level. And then we did the eco balance uh, for uh, all the people living here and went a step further and thought about, so now we have solved the technical issue more than less. But we have a huge issue about food, about uh, consumer stuff, about transportation and started the discussion what we can do here. So for a starter, we made uh, the whole area here car free and people that live here, they don't have cars. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this um, cooperative housing concept? Um, how is that embedded also in, in the city of Zurich? How important is corporate housing in Zurich? And what is the idea behind it? It's very important for the city of Zurich because as in all the cities in Europe, um, rents are rising high. Many people can't afford it to live in the city anymore. And corporate housing is a way to get uh, rid of this problem because in cooperative housing, people that live there, they own their house. So they only pay the amount that there is actually invested in the house and they need for maintenance and no profit is taken out of the system there. So it's much more affordable to live in a cooperative and at the end it's your own house. It's, it's like we are all, everybody that lives here is a owner of this cooperative. Um, the city of Zurich um, find that this really helps a lot. That's why we had a popular voting about this issue. And now the city tries to get at least one third of cooperative housing 
in the city of Zurich. At the moment, it's about 25%. So we try to raise it. So the city itself, it buys land and gives it to the cooperative that they can build more of this affordable housing. I think that's very interesting. Can you tell us how this is, works with the satellite apartments also here, sharing the apartment with 14 other people? Yeah, what we have here is actually the luxury version of uh, shared apartments. Uh, we have groups from one to three person that have their own apartment yeah. with a tea kitchen, with a bathroom, with uh, one or two sleeping rooms. Okay. And those uh, parts are completely noise insulated from the rest. Okay. And then we share together a living room, a big kitchen, loggia, terrace and stuff like this. Yeah. So we have a household together, we have all the benefits, yeah. but it, when it comes to the not so beneficiary thing like uh, noise, yeah. we don't have it because yeah. we have a noise insulated own apartment in yeah. it. At the end, um, it's a, a little bit bigger than a normal um, shared apartment, yeah. but it's way smaller than if each of us would live alone. Something between then can be a, a way uh, to expire, uh, to have this social dimension, profit from each other, have a smaller footprint, yeah. and on the other hand, still be in a very nice uh, living situation. Yeah. And if you look at these cooperative housing projects and more than housing, what makes more than housing even more special than the others? Well, it was this innovation platform at the end we built it. Uh, more than housing, as I told you, is, is uh, something that all the cooperatives did together. Um, so we tried out really many things and the other cooperatives, they look what we find out and they also started copying what we did. So we are in the innovation laboratory for the cooperative housing system in the city of Zurich. Okay. And why is it that uh, Morton Housing won this prize from the UN Habitat Award? That's also because of that uh, we mix up um, on a place where it's nearly unaffordable for normal people to live. Uh, the city of Zurich is maybe one of the richest, if not the richest city in the world. So housing prices are really high and the um, place is small, so we can't build uh, infinity projects like in other big cities then the question was how can you combine in such a rich place a social question of who can live there how can we live there and how can we build a neighborhood that is mixed with uh, people from every kind of um, uh, cultural background so, and all this together was quite impressing for them. So they announced us uh, and we get the first prize at the end. So let's deep dive into these uh, three topics a little bit more. Let's start with energy. You already mentioned that the, the heating system of the houses is based on waste heat from a calculation center. And um, can you tell us more about this 2000 watt concept that is applied also here? Well, the 2000 watt concept itself, it comes from the ETH, it's more about justice. Um, 2000 watt would be the amount of energy that the average on the world uses, right, at each moment. So if we go all down to 2000 watt on the whole world, we would achieve exactly nothing because it would be the same as today. But today we use much more than 2000 watt. So it is a good thing for industrial countries to go to this justice level because for them it's a downgrade in energy at the end. So we implemented this idea. Um, there is now a label for 2000 watt uh, areas, which we achieved quite easily. We are actually half under it. And this label not only looks what you built, the new thing about this label was it looks also on how you maintain it. It measures at the end what happens really on the area, and how you do things, and also transportation is an issue. So we put all these things together and get this label. We actually help them develop the label for 2000 watt areas. 
Um, and this was quite uh, an innovation at the time, but it's not the end solution uh, for the energy problem. So it's just a step further going more down. And what does that mean regarding climate change and greenhouse gas emissions? I would say in reality at the end it's one small step, but it's not the end. So at the end I think it's clear for me we have to go down to zero CO2 emissions and we have to compensate that somehow we have to build as much uh, as we need. Do you have other like examples that show how you could reduce the footprint from the construction and energy? I think one very important question is for what time do you build a building? It's a huge difference if a building stands for 50 years, for 80 years or for 200 years. So what we did here is we tried to build buildings that hold quite long and normally there is a first big renovation period uh, after 40 years where you have to remove the heating systems for example or some pipes and stuff. So we looked very closely that all the stuff that we have to remove before the building comes at it, its end is easily to remove. So. Um, you can access all these pipes and tubes and stuff that you have to remove after yeah. 40 years. So this is then on one hand very affordable to do and on the other hand we can continue using the building for a way longer time. Yeah. So again this building here that you are sitting in, it's a one brick building. There are stones thick like 50 centimeters what it is built on. It actually won the Brick Award 2014. That's also another prize yeah. that <laughs> happens to come here. Um, and inside those stones there's uh, soil from uh, volcanic um, regions for insulation. Okay. So it's only stone based. This means this holds nearly forever. I mean, normal outside insulation you have to remove and redo after sometimes. But this, not, not so much. It holds. So if we start thinking uh, also in the duration period, then I think we can achieve for the next generation a lot. And I think maybe last question, you mentioned that the, all the entire heat is produced from, as waste heat from a, from a calculator center. Um, what about the uh, electricity consumption? Well, we have normal electricity as everybody else in the city of Zurich. It's all renewable. And for us here, we also produce quite a huge amount of our own electricity on the rooftop okay. with a solar panel. Yeah. Good, then let's move on to the second topic of mobility. You mentioned that people are not allowed to have a car in here. How does that work? How can they still be mobile? Well, uh, it works. If you move in here, you have to sign a contract that you don't have a car, except if you really need it for, uh, for your job, then you can have one. But these are only a few people. Or if you're handicapped, then you can have a car. All the others, um, they sign a contract that they don't own a car and they move in here without this car. So there is a bus over there, um, there are many, many bicycles on this area. We had to build way more bicycle spots than normal housings have because uh, all the people have more than one bicycle. I think uh, maybe you too, uh, I don't know. I have one for a uh, vacation, one for every day, one cargo bike to ride with the children. So we need more bicycle spots, yeah. but we get rid of this souterrain, immense, huge garage for cars yeah. that all the new settlements have normally. So that also sp saved us a lot of energy while the construction period. Uh, some of the houses don't even have a basement. Yeah. That's a, a lot of energy if you don't have to dig and do all this concrete stuff. And it's probably also cost saving. Yes, it's about 20% uh, of the costs you save if you can get rid of this souterrain yeah. garage. But that's quite something. 
And what I like as a natural scientist is we can have trees, right? Mm -hmm. Because under the trees there is no subterranean auto garage. Yeah. Which is now for 99% of all the new buildings in the city of Zurich, they cannot have normal trees. Because yeah. normally they dig a hole over the whole layer, make this subterranean garage, which is way cheaper if you build it outside of the footprint of the house. Yeah. So and then they do about this amount of soil on top of it and some decoration miniature trees. You have to cut them if they get too big. Yeah. Not so here. We have these trees. They are not so high yet, but they will become really big. Yeah which is a really nice thing. You see this in the old town of the city, that you have these big trees, but in newer parts of the city, there are no trees anymore. And according to climate change and the heating, which is way higher in the cities, that's a really bad thing. So we have to get rid of this subterranean garage stuff to have normal trees again, and to have a affordable uh, climate in the city for everyone. And overall, if you would now compare the carbon impact or carbon footprint of the people um, from mobility here compared to the mobility of people in other places in Zurich, how would that compare? You would see that the car is not here, which is also the case for 50% of the households in the city of Zurich. The main difference is actually the car. Yeah. And in all the other sector, I would say they drive a bit more bicycle, walk more or use public transportation. But as it comes to flying, it's the same as everywhere in the yeah. city of Zurich. Maybe even more because we are close to the airport. Yeah. Good. Let's talk about food. What is the role of nutrition when we want to fight climate change? It's a big role, I think. Uh, we did a CO2 bilance here and we find out it's about one third of the CO2 emissions because we have this nice energy autark buildings and this uh, low transport uh, footprint. So at the end it comes down to food. And I think that's the place we can change the most at the moment, because nothing was done, absolutely nothing. It's insane how much, uh, mainly animal products, we eat and consume every day, which have a huge footprint. And it would be so easy to go down a little bit, just a little bit. It would be so easy, it would be a bit harder if we go down dramatically. But uh, I mean, for example, only if you eat uh, a chicken instead of a cow, <laughs> it brings you so much. And for the curry, it doesn't matter that much. So also here, it is quite difficult for a cooperative like Meralz Wohnen to enter this sector. What we can do is we can offer um, alternatives, yeah. right? So we started this veggie production cooperative, which yeah. was strongly supported by the cooperative itself. Okay. Um, we started this project called Speicher um, with uh, yeah. food that is produced um, sustainable. There are no animal, nearly no animal products down there and people can just um, consume the stuff there. So it's a kind of our own supermarket. Okay. Um, How does we, that work? Well, it's, it's just a basement. We did a system that uh, all the small households can have to gather their food down there. So 24 hours, seven days, they can go there and grab whatever they want. They just have to mark what they took. So then it's booked out from their yeah. conto. Um, it's actually very easy, but with this we can steer what kind of nutrition come into the system. Yeah. It gives us an opportunity to, to think about what we actually want to have here. Yeah. And it only works if we have the goal to be more sustainable, right? We could also put a lot of meat down there, yeah. but we don't do this. Okay, yeah. um, so it's, it's something about giving you the tools to yeah. actually move something. And are people happy to using these tools? Yeah, it's growing. We have 95 households participating down there. Uh, one and two coming every week. 
So I don't know where this leads to, but it's a very successful uh, intervention, I would say. Yeah. Um, there are also these small community gardens here. I think the, the thing about the, um, the vegetable cooperative and also about the community gardening we have here is mainly that people learn what is a seasonal vegetable, what are vegetables anyway, you can actually eat them. <laughs> So you can cook around vegetable instead of cooking around a piece of meat, which is a huge difference um, according to the amount of meat you consume at the end. Yeah. So it's just about giving opportunities to consume something else, to think about. Um, I think when it comes to food, most of the people have their system taken from their parents, never thought closely about what they actually consume, why they do it, it's just common how they do it. Yeah. So I go to the supermarket, I buy this and this, and I cook it, or I go to the restaurant. But it's nearly habit. no one uh, thought about it, it's just habit. So you have to break through this somehow if yeah. you want to change something there. Okay. Yeah. So you have to change the system where they live in, or you have to come in with with huge impacts uh, to, to disturb something there. Yeah. I think the easiest way to change something is when they move away from the parents or move to new households, mm -hmm. because then you have to adapt your uh, food system. Mm -hmm. And if you adapt it anyway, why not do it in a more sustainable way? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of research needed in this sector and Mainly, there is a lot of courage needed also politically to enter this sector. Yeah. You mentioned this More Than Veggies uh, project. Can you explain us how this is organized? It's also a cooperative and it's a community supported agriculture yeah. project. That means um, we don't give all the risk for the production to a farmer. Instead, we took the risk to the consumers. Okay. So we pay in advance for a whole production system, hire, um, in our case, uh, three people, four people now, that help us produce yeah. uh, vegetables with a fair amount uh, of money for them. Yeah. And because the, the food production system is at the moment not very balanced in Switzerland, so uh, this does not work if we don't want to pay way too much. So we have to help in the production. Everybody that uh, is part of this cooperative has to help five days a year. Well, five half days on the field. Okay, and what producing kind of... vegetables? Okay. Um, we have these four guys that bring the know-how and tell them what to do. Yeah. So we produce them together. Yeah. It's an alternative to this classical, there's a farmer and you buy his product, but yeah. the price you pay him is not nearly enough to have a sustainable farm production. Yeah. So he needs a lot of subsidies. And even then he has a very low income. And I think our um, food production system is a bit sick. Yeah. So and this is one possible way we can solve this. I don't say that it's the golden bullet, but I think uh, it's worth thinking about it, yeah. and try out stuff like yeah. this. Great. I think we covered most of the important consumption fields also that we have here in the households. And maybe you could give us also a personal statement. Where do you see the biggest um, challenge for you or most difficult part to reduce carbon impact in your life? Well, it's definitely the food. Um, for me, it's probably 50% of the carbon footprint. Yeah. So and I made it a bit easier uh, because I moved into a vegan household, even okay. if I'm not at all vegan. Yeah. So this would be a challenge yeah. uh, to go down there. Yeah. And how does that work, to, um, living together with different dietary? Well, it's very easy. Yeah. Uh, as I told you, it's all a part of uh, adaption. Uh, yeah. And if we look at not just here in, in this uh, cooperative, but general in Zurich, where do you see the biggest challenge and problems for regarding, with regarding to climate change? I think one big challenge is, uh, 
after this whole food issue in the city of Zurich, you have all these old buildings which are really bad insulated. This is a, a big challenge, but a solvable challenge. Yeah. Then we have this transportation issue. Yeah. We have all these cars, which is not only a climate challenge, but also, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I like living on a place where it's safe to go outside and where I have space yeah. and uh, we get rid of nearly 50% of our space just for cars. Yeah. I think this is no way we can go to the future. Yeah. So there it is mainly a challenge in the hats of people. Yeah. Uh, according to this plane issue, I really don't know where this can go to, but it's clear for me it cannot go on like this. Yeah. There I see huge challenges. According to the electricity production, I think this is only a technical issue. We yeah. can solve this very easily if you want. Uh, it's just a matter of how fast we can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe those are some of the main challenges. Then some of the side fields, which are not so closely looked at, I think, are uh, consumer sectors like clothes, which grows from day to day in insanely amounts. Uh, we have about 50, 15 kilograms clothes and shoes per year per person in Switzerland, which is absolutely insane. I don't know how one can consume so much. Yeah. <laughs> of those stuff <laughs> and another maybe side field are all these electronical devices and the yeah. lifespan of them is yeah. going down and down um, there's a lot of energy going to stuff like this yeah so uh, i think after looking at the big fields we have to look sometimes also yeah. at smaller fields yeah. that are growing rapidly and should not be forgotten Thank you very much. Is there anything else which you would like to tell us or mention? I think my personal uh, favorite thing if it comes to living is what we do here actually. You're in an apartment with 14 people. Okay. So if you live in bigger groups, it's way easier to reduce your field pin. Yeah. Because then you can uh, organize yourself, you can organize your household, you can buy more uh, strategically yeah. food from sustainable sources yeah. and it makes fun yeah um, i think also if it comes to a social dimension i think humans are not uh, beings that are made to live alone in caves yeah. they never did they always lived in groups yeah if you look to uh, history yeah. or even further back so why not living in groups again yeah. and have all these social uh, things these interactions with each other you can help each other out with stuff and i think this would solve us many issues 